the civilization that gave us the Latin, Cyrillic, Arabic, and Hebrew alphabets. Phoenicia was an ancient Semitic civilization in the Levant. Parts of modern-day Syria, Lebanon, and northern Israel were littered with several independent Phoenician city-states. Their major cities like Tyre started to take shape around 3200 BCE and were large centers by 2750 BCE. These people were mostly known for their manufacturing and maritime trade. A key ingredient they manufactured was dyes, in particular a purple dye fashioned from murex shellfish that adorned the gowns and robes of royal figures. The Greeks used to call this dye Phoenikis, and later started referring to the Phoenicians as the Purple People. The Greek historian Herodotus wrote that the dye from the elite's clothes was so strong that it would stain the workers' skin. He also claimed that Phoenicia was the birthplace of the alphabet. According to him, the Phoenician, Cadmus, brought the alphabet to Greece sometime before the 8th century BCE. Before that, the Greeks had no alphabet. Almost all Western alphabets trace their origins back to this civilization. Fascinating, isn't it? There have been plenty of debates about Phoenician origins and their ethnic background, since the Greek work Phoenix was not used by the natives. Modern historians believe that the Phoenicians were another strand of the broader Canaanite peoples. A telling sign is how they associated the Canaanite god Baal with agriculture, rain, and fertility. For instance, the Phoenician city of Baalbek was a major pilgrimage center as it contained a temple dedicated to Baal and Astarte. The civilization rose to prominence after the Bronze Age collapse mostly in and around modern-day Lebanon. Tyre, one of the oldest cities in history, was an ancient port, industrial center, and a major trade hub. The Greeks believed that Europa, the mythology figure who gave her name to Europe, was born here. The Phoenicians themselves had quite a few stories about Tyre. For one, they believed that it was founded by Melkart, the god of the seas, navigation, and the underworld. While Melkart was the patron saint of Tyre, the Phoenician pantheon had a bunch of other gods as well. There is a story about the goddess of love, eroticism, and fertility, Astarte, who planted an olive tree with an eagle in its branches and a serpent wrapped around its base on a floating island. The island continued to float until Ushu, who would later be known as Melkart, arrived and sacrificed the eagles to the gods. Then Melkart established his temple there. It's interesting to note that Melkart would later be syncretized with the Greek demigod Hercules. The Phoenician pantheon was quite influential and most Greek gods were imported from it. The conflicts between the Christian god and Satan in the Book of Revelations are also a later version of the stories about the Phoenician deities Baal and Ya'am. El was the highest entity of the Phoenician religion. The creator of all things, El did not meddle in people's day-to-day -day affairs. He was far too grand for that. However, he was worshipped just the same, especially in Byblos or Gabal. This port city was the religious capital of Phoenicia, and the people believed that it was established by El at the beginning of time. Historians trace its origins as far back as 3000 BCE, when a fishing village had grown into a proper city. The city also became famous for its export of timber across the Mediterranean. Sidon was another key port city, close to Lebanese capital Beirut. This settlement was inhabited as early as 4000 BCE and Homer even claimed that its people had mastered the art of producing glass. For centuries upon centuries, this was the center of Phoenician culture and trade. The purple dye that would later catch the Greek eye was also invented here. It was so exquisite that only the richest folk could afford it. Eshmun, the god of healing and medicine, was often associated with this grand city which the Phoenicians used as a launching pad for spreading their culture. 
Eventually, other Phoenician cities started to learn and grow, so much so that they gave Sidon a run for their money. The balance of power shifted to Tyre in the 10th century, the city that would even take over the famous purple dye manufacturing. As the Phoenician network of port cities grew, they took over the entire Mediterranean. Master seafarers, they used their extensive trade networks to transport not only glass, dyes, and timber, but also metals and textiles. Commerce also allowed them to form smaller colonies and export their cultural ideas. One of these colonies was Carthage. Yes, that same ancient superpower Carthage that towered over the entire region. In the second century, Carthage fell to the Romans during the Punic Wars. As for the rest of Phoenicia, it had already been taken over by Alexander. Alexander began his conquest with Baalbek, which he renamed to Heliopolis. He then went and captured Byblos and Sidon. Tyre was the only one left. The Tyrians had initially laid down arms like their Sidonian brothers. But one thing led to another and they killed Alexander's envoy. When news reached Alexander, his blood started to boil and headed out for vengeance. The Siege of Tyre remains one of Alexander's deadliest wins. Scholars estimate that around 30,000 Tyrian citizens were either massacred or sold into slavery. With the fall of Tyre, the Phoenicians submitted to the Greek might most of the city-states eventually fell into the hands of the Romans. The temple at Baalbek was converted into the Temple of Jupiter, the largest religious site in the entire Roman Empire. The Phoenicians' legacy is vast and unparalleled. Their manufacturing and engineering led to advancements in technology, particularly regarding harbors and city fortifications. Their religion helped establish the Greco-Roman pantheon, among others. Their trade routes allowed Carthage to become a behemoth of the ancient world, and their alphabet inspired the creation of Greek-Latin alphabets, which most Western languages continue to use today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and we'll see you in the next one.